Well, hello there, church family. Um, you know, I think we probably anticipated this day would come, but it has come a whole lot sooner for us than I think any of us ever thought it might. Uh, starting tomorrow on uh, Sunday, July the 26th, we are going to be returning to an online worship service only at Mount Calvary for two weeks. Uh, at the end of those two weeks, we're going to reassess how we are doing among our church family and we'll make a decision for reopening and we hope maybe as early as August the 9th. Uh, so let me just emphasize that means that we are having no in-person services tomorrow or the following Sunday, nor are we going to have any in-person events during the week, Sunday school, youth, everybody will be meeting by way of Zoom. If you're a Sunday school teacher and you would like to try to explore a uh, meeting with your Sunday school class by way of a Zoom conference meeting uh, and you need some help with that, please contact us. Uh, if you are in a committee and your committee needs to meet and it needs to be face-to-face, -face, then we're just going to trust that you will use all the normal precautions that we keep uh, hearing about, that you would wear a mask, that you will stay distance, that you'll wash your hands, meet outside if you can, those kinds of things. Uh, we understand there may be some opportunities that uh, we just have to meet in person and if that's the case, then please be safe. We, we made this decision after speaking with the staff and the deacons. Uh, we do have one person in our church who has a confirmed COVID-19 case. Uh, we have a couple of other people who are waiting to hear back right now from some testing that's been done, and we're praying that everything will come back uh, negative. But uh, once again, we believe our church population has generally been shielded uh, from exposure, but we believe this is wisdom. So we're going to take this small step uh, to step back for just a little bit so we can regroup a little bit. Um, I have come to strongly believe uh, that the isolation that has been caused by this global pandemic has just been one of Satan's most effective tools ever to destroy human lives. Um, just think of all the reactions that we see in people around us right now. There's so much fear and anger and depression and despair. There are so many uh, people out there who are dealing with hopelessness, bitterness, uh, division, strife. It's just it's just an ugly world, and even some cases, even worse kinds of things have come out of this. And and, and the, the thing is, is we all know that these things reside in the human heart, but when isolation is paired with all of that, it only causes things inside of our hearts to fester, and we just spew the extremes into the atmosphere. And so, you know, we've been watching all these images on TV, and we see how these emotions get played out in the violence on our city streets. And I'm going to be honest with you, I really think a lot of the stuff that we're seeing right now is directly tied to the isolation that people have felt and they have uh, reacted so strongly. And, and and that's not to discount that there aren't some really important messages that are out there that we ought to be dealing with as the church and as people. Uh, but it just takes a lot of energy to deal with that. And so a lot of times we just tend to stay silent. I know my heart. I know I want the good conversation to happen, but isolation has worked its way into my spirit as well. And it's hard to want to swim a 100-meter relay when uh, dog paddling is keeping me safe right now. So maybe you feel the same way. And so, and the thing is, we just, we, we see all this stuff going on on television, and then we open our social media feeds, and we see all this needless bickering that's going on between our friends. And, and you know, we have to ask ourselves, are we really shaping the conversation, or are we simply just... Uh, creating barriers to kindness. I, I really think the church is going to be rightly criticized uh, in the coming months because instead of uh, instead of breaking down barriers, uh, we have been establishing and building our barriers high and entrenching ourselves in our own personal beliefs. And I really think I think it's going to hurt our witness. And so we're trying to be careful here at the church. I, I had a friend several years ago tell me something that you're all very familiar with, but when it comes to difficult conversations. Uh, he said, make sure you think before you speak. You need to ask yourself, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Or is it kind? T-H-I-N-K, think. And, uh, you know, I, I think we could probably trace a lot of the problems that are going on in our world right now to the fact that most of us, uh, we just know our hearts are desperately wicked. That's what Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 17. And because uh, we have uh, evil hearts, uh, we get too much time in isolation and we keep hearing our same voice over and over again in our head and maybe just a limited set of voices around us and sometimes the depression and the bitterness and the fear and the anger and all that stuff just festers. And so I want to encourage you, uh, as Jesus did in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said that we should take heart. Uh, in this world, we will have trouble, he said, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus said. And 
the question I want to ask you right now is, is, is that really true? And, and before you answer that, the question is not just generally speaking, is that really true? The, an the question is, is that true in your heart? Are you really uh, letting Jesus Christ uh, be your encouragement? And are you really taking heart in him? Uh, because if you are, that's going to require you to get into God's word and to be around God's people as much as possible. I don't know if you figured this out yet or not, but the preacher needs God's word to dig deeply into my heart. Uh, the preacher needs God's people to be around me to encourage me. And we all need that. We all need that. And that's the reason why it's been so difficult to make this decision. We don't want to step back. Uh, we desperately need to assemble together. Uh, we were never designed for isolation. Uh, it's been so refreshing for us to get together for the few weeks that we've been able to. And it's what makes this decision to pump the brakes just a little bit more difficult because we don't want to be going backwards. So let me encourage you on some things today. Number one, never forget the three imperatives that we've been using uh, to make decisions. Uh, we want to love God and love people. So love is uh, is our priority. That is the greatest commandment, and we know this. And so uh, let's really work hard at loving one another. You may have different ideas, different opinions, but if you can't love, then it doesn't matter what your opinions are. Uh, we don't need them. We need to love one another. So let's love one another. Uh, let's act uh, in wisdom. Uh, that's that's the the imperative of all decisions because sometimes there aren't um, there aren't really truly right or wrong decisions. If we we make a decision one direction, uh, it has consequences. If we make a decision a different direction, it has consequences. And somebody on either side of the thought process on that could say that you made a wrong decision. So we're not asking what's right or wrong. We're asking what is wise, and we really want this to be a wise decision. And I think we've uh, we've made a decision as best as we can. Uh, trust uh, God's word and God's leading for us. And so let's uh, live in wisdom. And then finally, let's live with witness. You know, I was talking to one of our deacons and the last thing we want to have happen is Avery County make the news and Mount Calvary Baptist Church be at the epicenter of that news. Uh, we do not want to needlessly or, or selfishly expose people in our church to uh, to uh, the risk of, of getting sick uh, and even worse. And so we are trying to protect our witness. We want the world to know that we love each other. We want the world to know that our, our uh, desire is to be able to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. And we can't do that if we are making, um, if we're making bad moves or false moves that create um, a situation that could be really uh, bad in our community, in our church community. And so those three imperatives are important. But I also want to encourage you in a couple of other things as well. Uh, I want you to uh, be praying. Pray like you've never prayed before for a safe reopening as soon as possible. And that means you're not only going to be praying for our church family, but you're going to pray for our community, our county, our state, our nation, and our world. So pray. Pray that the Lord will um, will help mitigate this uh, disease as soon as possible. Uh, and I also want to encourage you to be contacting your church family as often as you possibly can. Listen, in as many ways as possible, make phone calls, text messages, emails, send cards, um, do everything you can to stay in touch with your church family. I know I'm going to see a lot of you at grocery stores and out and about, and you know it, it, it feels difficult to for us to slow down when everybody else is stepping on the gas. Um, but you know there are there are a lot of big decisions that have to be made in our uh, community and in the coming days. And so um, once again, I just love you. We are asking for wisdom. We're protecting our witness. And so finally, let me encourage you to do this. Um, Mount Calvary, please, this is a new discipline I'd like for some of you to start doing. Some of you are already doing this, but um, I have found some particular help by spending time in Proverbs, and Proverbs has 31 chapters. If you read one chapter a day, uh, you'll read through the book uh, every month. Uh, some months you may have to double up. In February, you'll have to double up two or three days to, to get through the entire book. But if you'll read one chapter every day, read the chapter that corresponds with the day on which you are, I believe you will find uh, that God's book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs, will be a real encourage to, encouragement to you. Uh, if you're getting this um, video today, this is July the 25th, and so that would mean you'd be reading Proverbs 25. I want to take a step back just a few uh, days in the book of Proverbs as we close. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16 has been incredibly important to me throughout this whole uh, season. The words that um, that you read in this uh, this chapter, every single one of them 
uh, have direct relevance to the days in which we live. So if you'll let me, I'd like to just read Proverbs 16 to you uh, with very little, if, if really no commentary on what we're reading. Just listen to God's word and let these words sink deeply into your heart. Um, uh, Solomon wrote these words, To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart, but be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with him. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The lips of a king speak as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord, and all the weights in the bag are of his making. Kings detest wrongdoing. For a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get insight rather than silver? The highway of the upright avoids evil, and those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them and their hunger drives them on. Yet the scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of splendor, and it is attained in a way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. May God bless you. Mount Calvary family, we love you. Uh, we will miss you in these uh, days when we're not assembling, but I promise you, uh, God is with us. Uh, let's focus on him. Let's love one another. Let's love our community and let's be the church. God bless you.